briefly, kind of a uh, brief introduction you already got. We were looking at um, what, what we call disaster scenarios in spine surgery. Um, have a no disclosure. So basically, there's been standardization across kind of medical education for many of the things. ATLS, ACLS are kind of the main things that um, we're taught as young physicians in terms of doing things in, in a standardized way to get the best outcomes for patients. But in terms of major medical complications in the operating room, there really aren't that many standardizations. So we basically just went to our fellows and our attendings and said, here are a set of scenarios, here are multiple options for you, what would you do? Um, so the hypotheses were that there would be significant discrepancies between the people that had been around for a while and those who were just getting started at my level as a fellow, um, and that there was no standardization in terms of what uh, facility you came from. There may be different teaching in these certain scenarios. So as I said, there was a um, survey that was given out, um, 21 total people. Um, the main scenarios were loss of spinal signals and neuromonitoring, a prone cardiac arrest, prone position hypoxia in, in your thoracic instrumentation, uh, supine vertebral artery injury, and then sudden onset hypotension in a major reconstructive spine surgery. Um, so again, <clears throat> we looked at all these different options as to what you would do if you were given that situation. There were about up to, I think, uh, 15 different options. Pick your top five, one through five. Um, and then we um, basically rated them in terms of how frequent were these, um, these options. So again, not gonna, this is a big slide, not gonna go, go through everything as it would take the entire time to do just one of them, but you lose neuromonitoring signals. These are our results. Um, the main takeaway from this one was this was kind of the one that showed the best consensus among fellows in attendings. Um, and only half of attending, um, the, the attendings were kind of keyed into the fact that maybe you should check and see if there is inhaled anesthetic giving because this can definitely affect your neuromonitoring signals and pretty um, well shown across the um, fellows but not as much as the attendings. Uh, the next one was looking at a corpectomy at an anterior approach, and you have a rapid kind of high um, pressure bleeding as you're doing your surgery. Um, again, here are the results, um, and then just wanted to draw your attention to two specific um, discrepancies. Um, one of the things that we do get concerned about is injectable hemostatic agent. Um, so something that we use very commonly in surgery, but if you do have an arterial injury, there's a potential that you could cause a stroke, and this was chosen amongst a big cohort of the people. Um, and then one of the other options was trying to open up your um, decompression and do a direct repair of a vertebral artery injury, um, which is very technically challenging, I would say, even amongst vascular surgeons. So for someone who very, has maybe never done this before, probably not a good option. Um, and that was very much higher seen in the, the fellows cohort. cohort. Our third scenario was um, you're working in the chest and you see um, loss of oxygen saturation with moderate hypotension. Um, so again, you know these were our, our results. Um, a lot of words up there, but the main thing was that um, decompression of the thoracic cavity was really not that commonly chosen. If you combined both the placement of chest tubes and um, needle decompression, less than half of people um, chose those two options. Um, another kind of uh, questionable response that was commonly chosen was pleural repair. Um, again, something that I don't know, it's a very, very thin membrane, I don't know that it's actually possible, um, but people, given that as an option, thought that they might try it. Um, so again, something that can definitely happen in spine surgery and you know, a couple of outliers that um, give us some direction for teaching points. Um, number four here, um, doing a posterior forearm anatomy. Um, and then you have, looking down at the bottom, VTAC followed by PA arrest. So this is kind of taking us back to our ACLS, um, basically standard cardiac resuscitation. Um, and, you know, fairly good consensus among um, the different people we 
actually do remember some of our general medicine. Um, but one of the, the teaching points is that um, in the current ACLS algorithm, amiodarone uh, 300 milligram um, injection is part of the VTAC protocol. And that was basically only chosen by a few fellows and, and almost none of the attendings actually um, chose that as a possible option. Our last one here, uh, doing a T10 to pelvis, you have a, a large um, prone surgery. Um, you're working in the anterior part of the spine. You get some oozing um, from the, diffusely from the, the entire incision, and then also some venous blood coming up through the anterior part of your, um, of your corpectomy. And again, here are our results here. Pretty good consensus, um, but one of the things to look at is uh, disseminated intravascular co coagulation and venous air embolus are two things that we don't think about often, um, but fairly straightforward resuscitation protocol. Uh, one of the things, if you do get uh, if you do get a venous air embolus, you can get rapid onset of cardiac um, abnormalities with um, severe loss of um, perfusion, because you can basically get an airlock in the, in the chest, and rather than continuing the case, knowing that that may be an option, doing a rapid resuscitation um, is something you need to do, and this was pretty well recognized. Um, but again, what you do first, and um, you know, there were, there were a couple things down here. Um, getting a cell saver, I don't know that that's going to help you very much, but um, just some points for us to look at. Um, so in conclusion, um, teaching um, for management of interoperative complications is still highly variable. Um, you know, teaching al algorithms from previous institutions definitely affect that, um, and it gives us some highlights to look for future education, and um, a lot of people are moving towards simulator situations. I know we had a few in uh, my medical school training, but um, again, this may be coming into higher level um, training in terms of neurosurgeon and orthopedic surgeons. This gives us some points to look at. So these are my references, and uh, thank you very much. Great. Can you go back one slide? So it's a great study. So we don't have time for much. Uh, does anybody have a burning question? Margaret? Mm -hmm. So um, the choices uh, that you had as far as what to do if these things happen, um, was there an obvious correct answer, or could any of those... The, there were definitely um, a few that were things that you should absolutely do in one of your top five. Um, there were a few that were not incorrect, but not maybe the top choices. And then there were also a few that were absolutely incorrect things. So um, in your references, if you go back to the reference slide, why has this not been looked at before? <laughs> I mean, I don't see anything in here that's uh, showing that. I think um, in terms of our literature in neurosurgery and orthopedic surgery, um, teaching is just kind of at the forefront, and, you know, in standardization of teaching. Um, and it's it's becoming more of an interest. Uh, I know when I was at the academy this year, um, there were some talks on, on education. Um, but looking at the way we educate um, our trainees is really not something that's been a focus of, of the scientific uh, literature. So any other thoughts? I mean, I, I congratulate you on doing this work, and I hope you'll take this as a springboard towards Absolutely. being the, on the forefront of doing this. Rod, any thoughts? Yeah, no, this is great. I mean, I think this is a great project um, that you guys have done in standardizing, you know, some like a spine ACLS or something. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Great job.